Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I'm a gorilla in the wrist. Today we're looking at this Pagani Design PD1766, a watch that's got me in a bit of a quandary. Let me explain why. So what, what we have here is the Pagani Design PD1766. This is a 1957 speedy homage. They do it in three colours, uh, and they do it in the blue, they do it in a green, and they do it in a black textured dials, and I'll stick pictures up so that you can see all of those. Um, I kind of like the blue steel kind of look of this one, so um, that's the, that's the colour that I went for. Um, and I picked this one up for £33, around $45. Um, when I checked today, it had gone up to 41 But I think for a watch on a Seiko movement, with a Seiko movement, um, on a bracelet, not a bad bracelet, I think 33 quid is pretty good. Um, so let's work our way around it very quickly. So the dial, we have a stainless steel tachymeter, got it right that time. Um, we've got applied indices all the way around. Um, we have a triangle at the 12 and then um, just batons all the way around for the others. There's no numerals on this. Um, there is a black minute track all the way around the outside. There's no running second hand on this one. Um, and there's no date, so it keeps the dial quite clean. It's very symmetrical. Um, it has a sub-dial at the 3 and a 9. The sub-dial at 3 is the 24-hour sub-dial, um, and at 9 is the 60-minute chronograph feature. And the second, what looks like the second hand isn't, that is the chronograph hand. It has a screw-back case and crown, giving it 100 metres of water resistance, and this is the Seiko VK64 move. Um, the hands are really nice, though. I'm not sure whether it's coming across, but they are very high polished and faceted as well, which is quite impressive for this money. Um, and, but it comes with a really nice dome sapphire crystal, which gives you quite a lot of distortion. Um, and the finishing, I think, is pretty good. Um, so it, there's, a, there's a really good, interesting balance of high polished, as we've got on the outside of the bezel, uh, and the slightly slab socket side of the watch, which has got a very um, nicely done brushed polished finish. I mean, it's not you know, not world beating, but it's pretty good. Um, there's a nice uh, shiny chamfered edge there, um, and the bracelet itself is a, a, a again an interesting mix of brushed and polished. So we've got polished outer links, very very shiny, um, but really nice brushed mid links as well. Um, in terms of the basic dimensions, it's 40 millimetres across, so a good wearable size. It has 20 millimetre lugs. Um, the bracelet itself tapers down to about 17 millimetres at the butterfly clasp. It's about 13 millimetres thick, so again, fairly decent. Because it's not an automatic movement, it is a quartz movement, you would expect it to be reasonably thin, um, and they have delivered on that. Um, and the lug-to-lug -lug is about 47 millimetres as well. Um, you sort of mentioned the the bracelet is a decent size, so it fitted the Gorilla. Um, it comes with a butterfly clasp. I think any of you who have watched any of my videos will know what I think of those. Um, and the finishing around the blade bracelet clasp isn't great, if I'm absolutely honest. And the, the whole bracelet itself is all a little bit, it is a little bit jangly. Um, but we'll come on to that a little bit later. So. That's the basic walk around. Let's do the detailed dimensions for this one. So let's run through the facts and figures with this bad boy. Um, we have a dial width of 40 millimeters, lug to lug of 48 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters, so an imminently wearable watch. And at 13 millimeters, it will sit nicely on the wrist. It has the Seiko VK64 movement in it, weighs in at an almost perfect 146 grams, has 100 metres of water resistance, and a rather fetching dome sapphire crystal.
So let's talk about the things that I dislike about this watch as a starter. Um, and the first one is the the lack of a running second hand. Now I appreciate that the watch it's homaging didn't have that either, um, but for me I kind of miss it. Um, I, I, my view of whether the watch is working is normally a quick glance to see if the second hand is moving. Unless I've started the chronograph on this one, I can't see. So that's the first thing in it. The second bit is the butterfly clasp. Now you know I've only ever really seen one watch with a butterfly clasp I liked, which was the Vario Empire True GMT. Um, I find that particularly on a watch where they don't give you half links, it makes it hard to get a decent fit. Um, sometimes you get lucky. Um, on this one, I didn't. So the, the, the opportunity for me was to either have it too tight or a bit loose. Um, I decided to go for the reasonably tight. It's not horrifically tight. It's not cutting off the circulation to my wrist. Um, but the consequence of that is that every time you exert yourself or you tense the muscles in your hand, the butterfly clasp unclips itself, which is a bit embarrassing. At some point, it's going to go flying across the room. I just know it is. Um, the third thing I'm not a big fan of is I don't think the finishing at the lugs is particularly great. So there's a bit of a big gap. This is the other problem. It's doing it as I was saying. Um, there's a bit of a gap between the body um, and where the bracelet fits. Um, it just makes it look a bit untidy compared to the other gaps between the bracelets. Um, and the articulation of this one isn't great. Um, so it gets stuck. There is something about the design of this bracelet that means when you do that, they don't always, when you do that, they don't always go back the way they should. Um, and so for me, that's a bit of a problem. Um, no great surprise to say because it's a Pagani design watch, the loom is not very good, although they have tried something different with this one. Um, but you will have seen the loom shot, make up your own mind. Um, for me, this is what I expect from Pagani Design. So no shock, but I, I still expect slightly better. Um, so that's the things that I dislike about this watch. So in terms of the things that I like about this, um, it's hard not to recognise that for the money that I paid for it, at £33, it has really good specs. Um, so home sapphire crystal, that's not cheap. Um, a good... Seiko movement in it, that's not cheap. Um, well, it's not expensive, but it's not cheap either. Um, a fairly good bracelet, again, not cheap. Um, this this watch has plenty of good spec. Um, the second thing I really like, and I didn't mention it, that dome sapphire crystal is really impressive. Um, you get really good distortion. Um, I think, as I said earlier, you could probably do with a dash more anti-reflective because it is reflecting the world and their wife at the moment. Um, but apart from that, very, very good. Um, the third thing I like is just the finishing. Um, now, I, I have seen other reviewers who have been a bit critical of the finishing, um, that the brushing isn't particularly clear. You can't see the brush marks. I think a little bit of context, folks, this was 30 quid. Um, and actually, for a 30 quid watch, the finishing on this does vaguely remind me of the San Martin and the Seamaster 300 homage. Um, it's pretty decent for the money. I think, I think it's pretty decent for a lot more money than that. Um, and the final thing is it, it looks good. It just looks good. Um, it, now I know they can't claim any credit for that because they didn't design it. Um, but it looks good on the wrist. Um, it's a bit of a handsome bugger. Right. So I'm going to go at summing this one up. Bear with me. This may take a little time. There's a lot about this watch that I really like. I mean, really like. I mean, it's got its flaws and its faults, but, you know, at 30 quid, that's not fine. It has all the right ingredients. So, good movement, handsome dial, um, decent bracelet, um, good specs all round, really. But I don't love it. Um, this is really strange. It's a bit like um, having all the right notes, just not necessarily in the right order. And apologies for my non-UK viewers who will have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's a, a, a Morecambe and Wise sketch. Um, it's a bit, the, the only parallel I can really give, it's a bit like when you hear a band playing one of your favourite songs, but there's something just lacking. Um, I can admire this watch for what you get for it. 
um, but I just can't find it to love it. And that's that's the quandary for me, is I don't really understand why. Um, let's say it's got all the right notes, it's missing something. I don't know what it's missing. There is an X factor that just doesn't work on this one for me, um, which is such a shame because it's such such a nice looking watch. Um, and at that price, it's hard not to recommend it. And I would recommend it to others, just not to myself. Um, for some reason, it doesn't do it for me. Um, and as I say, it's a bit frustrating when you don't understand or you can't put your finger on what it is. Um, but that's the quandary, I guess. Um, so I, I don't have an answer to the quandary. I think you need to make your own mind up. Um, but that's it. It's a slightly rainy October Saturday afternoon. Um, we've got the rest of the weekend to enjoy. Um, please, if you've enjoyed the video, um, please like and subscribe. Comment. I love the feedback that I get from you guys and gals. Um, please leave feedback. What did you think? Do you agree? Do you love this watch? Do you have the same quandary as me? Um, I really would be interested in hearing your views. Um, still got a ton of um, content I need to do. Still been very busy at work, so very conscious of that. Um, but there is a ton of other stuff coming through. I've got a new Casio that you may well be interested in. I am. Um, and at some, shop, some point, I've got a new G-Shock Square turning up. Um, I'm looking forward to that one immensely. Um, but that's all from me. Um, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Um, and I hope to see you back very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.